Hey everyone, it's Mallory here with cats.com where we're all about cats. So welcome back if you've been on the channel for a while and I also want to give a shout out to those of you who are brand new. So uh, a lot of you are watching this video on whether or not your cat's imprinted on you. It's been huge and I've also noticed an uptick in subscribers. So for those of you who are brand new, I want to give you a big welcome to the channel. Again, my name is Mallory and I do product reviews, buyer's guides, and just general information on all things cats. We also have Dr. Sarah Wooten releasing videos on veterinary and behavioral topics one to two times a month. Uh, and I'm really excited to have you here with us and uh, <laughs> getting to learn more about your cat and ways to optimize your life with them. In this video, we're going to be talking about my top tips for keeping your cat's litter box odor-free for good, actually doing this and ensuring that when people come into your home, they won't immediately smell the litter box. I'm a cat product reviewer. I try a lot of litter boxes. I always have about three or more litter boxes in the house, and I'm trying a rotation of cat litter products. Now, for me, if I'm smelling the litter, I know what to say about it. I know that a stinky litter is going to be stinky. I can write about that in my review. Um, but I know that my cats need a clean, odor-free litter box in order to be happy. So I've had to learn some tips and tricks uh, to keep the litter box clean and to reduce litter box odor. And I'm going to share them with you in this video. My first tip is going to be perhaps a little tiresome, and it is that you of course need to be cleaning the litter box regularly. And by regularly, I mean at least once a day. Regardless of how many cats you have or how many litter boxes you have in the home, a once daily scooping is going to be what it takes in order to maintain a decent level of cleanliness. Now ideally, you would be cleaning out every time your cat uses a litter box, um, and that's where automatic litter boxes come in handy, but I'm actually not going to recommend an automatic litter box. Um, often these are just more hassle than they're worth, and even a really good automatic litter box can be kind of frustrating, and it's expensive. So I think you're ultimately just better off doing a regular cleaning um, once or twice a day. Of course, you probably already know this, and you know that even if you're cleaning regularly, it's not always working so well. You're still ending up with some odor coming from the litter box. Uh, and that's why you need to set yourself up for success. This point brings me to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Tuft & Paw. They're the makers of the Cove Litter Box. And I've been using this for a couple of years. Um, one thing I really like about it is that it does just that. It sets you up for success in that, one, it has a smooth interior, so you aren't worrying about nooks and crannies where litter could get stuck. And it also comes with a caddy that contains a litter scoop and a broom. So it enables you to easily clean out the litter box and maintain a higher standard of cleanliness as you do so. So if you'd like to get 10% off your order, you can enter the coupon code ALLABOUTCATS10 at checkout when you order from Tuft & Paw. Again, the litter box you choose is going to be your first step in ensuring that the litter box doesn't smell bad. Um, so you can use something like the Cove litter box I just mentioned, something spacious, large enough that it's not collecting a lot of waste in there, or you can use my personal favorite, which is the iPremio stainless steel litter box. There are a few things in common between these two litter boxes. They're all free of those nooks and crannies and tight corners where things can get stuck. Um, but the iPremio is set apart in the fact that it has this smooth interior surface that's going to resist sticking even more, and it makes it easier for everything to stay clean. In addition to getting a good litter box, you're going to want to fill it up with good litter. And I find that this can be the single most important thing you do um, when it comes to ensuring that your cat's litter box stays cleaner. You want to use a litter that's not going to break up into small particles or stick at the bottom of the litter box. And what I found is that clumping cat litter does tend to work better. It tends to retain less odor, but you need to get a fast clumping litter and you need to use a generous amount of it. So you want to use at least three inches, maybe four inches of litter in the litter box. And you're going to want to use a good hard and fast clumping product. Um, in the past, I've recommended Dr. Elsie's uh, ultra litter, but I've noticed over the years that it tends to stick more uh, than it used to. 
It also tends to be dustier. So I've switched to recommending a couple of other products. One litter that works really, really well in pretty much every respect is Everclean's Extra Strength Unscented Cat Litter. It's a little bit more expensive. Other options are the Free and Clean Unscented Formula from Tidy Cats, which has become my go-to. And there's also a variety of options from Arm & Hammer, including their Arm & Hammer Slide product. Um, all of these are great options if you want a good clumping clay litter. I'm also a fan of Sustainably Yours, which tends to stick even less than any clumping clay litter product, while also controlling odors really well. I'll put links in the description to all of my top recommended products, uh, as well as a video on that subject in case you'd like to learn a little bit more. The next thing you need to think about is your litter scoop. So the litter scoop you choose makes a huge difference, and that's why I'm a big fan of the Litter Lifter. It's an amazing litter scoop that has these parallel tines that just sift through the litter incredibly quickly and incredibly thoroughly, capturing even tiny particles of litter. It's not going to be a good fit for every product, like a pine pellet litter. For that, you might want to consider their pellet litter scoop, but for all of the litter products I just recommended, it works like a dream, and I've really, really enjoyed using it. Then, if you have established your foundation, you have a good litter box, you have a good cat litter, you have a good litter scoop, you're scooping it every day, and then you're cleaning out the litter box entirely on a regular basis, and you're still having issues with smell. It might be time to add in a litter box deodorizer. Now, generally, these aren't really necessary, but I think for some people with particularly sensitive noses, or if your cat, for whatever reason, has a particularly pungent smell, a deodorizer can be um, a good choice. Now, a lot of these are not going to be very cat friendly, so you don't want to choose anything that has added fragrances. Um, and I found that um, activated carbon or uh, baking soda tends to work pretty well. So you can just sprinkle that on the bottom of the litter box and then over the top of the litter and mix it in. Um, and these can help to neutralize the odor in the litter box. Another thing you can consider is that maybe it's not the litter box that is the problem. Maybe it's where you're putting the litter after it leaves the litter box. So if you have a regular trash can sitting next to the litter box and it's not being emptied every single day, then that can start to accumulate some odors. And if that's an issue, I would recommend the Litter Genie. So I've been using this for several years, so it seals off the litter waste bag um, and then you just empty it out on a regular basis but you're able to keep the litter in there for longer uh, without releasing any smell. The last point I want to suggest is to not change what's happening in the litter box but what's happening in your cat's body before they go to the litter box. So if you're noticing a lot of those fecal odors there's a good chance that you can cut back on it by changing your cat's diet. So poo is going to smell but it's going to smell less if it spends less time digesting and allowing these gases to build up and to create all of these smells. Uh, so a highly digestible and efficient diet is going to work a lot better. So in your cat's body, that generally means a meat-based diet without a lot of added um, plant ingredients, not a lot of added fiber. You're just looking for a pretty simple um, species-appropriate meat-based diet. I know people will say that a raw diet is the way to get your cat's uh, waste smelling a lot less smelly, but I found that there's even a significant difference between the fecal odor of a cat on a dry diet and a basic meat-based wet diet. So switching from something like um, Purina cat chow to something like Fancy Feast or, or Friskies, just that switch can make a big difference in what you're smelling in the litter box. and It'll also benefit your cat's health. So those are my suggestions for an odor-free litter box. There's no way to completely eradicate the odor, um, but these tips should help. Um, and then the one other thing I want to mention is that a lot of the worst odors happen when your cat's not using the litter box at all. So you want to make sure not to do anything that will make your cat want to go outside of the litter box because that's when the really bad odors start cropping up. So I'll put links to my videos on uh, what to do if your cat is going outside of the litter box linked in the cards and the description. I hope this was helpful for you if you're having an odor problem. 
Uh, let me know in the comments if you found any solutions of your own or what you're going through so that I can respond to you in the comments. I really, really appreciate that you're here, whether you've been here for a while or if you're brand new to the channel, um, your support is much appreciated. So thanks again, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.